It's all going to zero against Bitcoin. It's going up forever. You're against Bitcoin. You're against freedom. Good morning, everybody. We are back. How you doing this morning? Today's show is going to be an interesting show. While everyone's getting excited about the price pumping, yes, we're hovering around 35K. I think it's times like these when it's important to remember why you Bitcoin. As I always say, once you know why you hodl, the hodl becomes easier. And we got an epic clip from our friend Max DeMarco, a.k.a. Or at least he used to go by Pleb Music. I don't know if he's still doing it. And it was with Michael Saylor. And he asked him a very simple question. And, of course, Michael Saylor answers in a profound way. And the question was, what's a question you wish you've been asked? And Saylor's response, of course, was beautiful and poetic. And his response was basically, how will you make the world a better place? And, of course, the answer is Bitcoin. And so... I don't think I could have picked a better way to refocus our attention, refocus why we are here as Bitcoiners. Yes, we all love to see number go up. Yes, we love the price pumping. Yes, we all know the ETF news is, you know, macro, macro, macro. And that's what everyone is talking about. But again, when you know why you hodl, hodling becomes so, so much easier and it's something I've been saying for a long time on the show. Bitcoin is purpose. Bitcoin has given me purpose. And I just truly, truly am always just absolutely impressed by how Bitcoin is able to turn people's minds on, turn people on, orient them towards the better, not only just in themselves, but for the world at large. And we're going to get into that. I think you guys are going to really enjoy this clip. And then, of course, I do have some updates on the ETF stuff, the the crazy stuff that happened with the DTCC yesterday and the BlackRock ETF rollout. You know, the ETF shenanigans. Does it matter? Should you care or not? Is it spoofing? I don't know. We shall go all into it. We'll completely cover it. All the things that happened since yesterday's show. But anyways, welcome to Simply Bitcoin, guys. We are your number one source for the peaceful Bitcoin revolution. We cover breaking news, culture, and memetic warfare. We usually bring on Bitcoiners from all around the world, from the biggest names to the everyday Bitcoiner. We got them all, and we will be your guide through the separation of money and state. Of course, I am not alone today. I'm here with my co-host, Dell, the Funky Hoddle Sapien. How are you doing this morning, Dell? What's, uh, What's top of mind for you this morning? Well, if you look at the charts here, there, Opti, you can see how we broke through the resistance. Right now, we're sitting at a comfortable 35, 133.76, which means the downward trends are in the past, in the rear view mirror. We can look down the road and we can see the trending. Tr- uh, man, I'm so sick of all that nonsense. <laughs> Who cares? Who cares? Oh, oh, the trap door just yet. We just dropped back to a level 35. Okay, this signals a new. Come on, stop, stop. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> love it love it love it all right well Dell, what you got for us on the culture today well i didn't i was trying to find something that was not a rant on the war and how fiat money funds that but there's just two things that were so plainly obviously in my face and and so good that it just it, they're not even really hiding it it's just like yeah we're spending crap tons of money to, to f- fund massacre. And so I, I got to go down that route again. Regret okay. It. All right. Well, remember we're on YouTube, so uh, don't get too wild, Dell. Don't get too wild. <laughs> oh, man. All right, guys. Well, we got a good show for you today. Let's get all into it. The Bitcoin numbers. Is your Bitcoin in cold storage really secure? Is your seed phrase really secure? Stamp Seed's do-it-yourself kit has everything you need to hammer your seed words into commercial-grade titanium plates instead of just writing them on paper. Don't store your generational wealth on paper. Paper is prone to water damage, fire damage. You want to put your generational wealth on one of the strongest metals on planet Earth, titanium. Your words are actually stamped into this metal plate with this hammer and these letter stamps. And once your words are in, they aren't going anywhere. No risk of the plate breaking apart and pieces falling everywhere. Titanium stamp seeds will survive nearly triple the heat produced by a house fire. They're also crush proof, waterproof, non-corrosive, and time proof. All things that paper is 
is not, allowing you to hodl your Bitcoin with peace of mind for the long haul. Stamp your seed on Stamp Seed. All right, guys, we make it easy for you. Scan the QR code over there. And again, as I've been telling you guys for the last couple of days, actually probably months, before we even saw the price start to make a little hiccup, make sure your cold storage is set up. You know, we, we have our, our ads in the beginning set up in a certain way so that you definitely get your seed phrase in something that won't get destroyed. And then, of course, getting yourself some hardware wallets, making sure that you are backed up completely. Anyways, let's get into the numbers, guys. Let me zoom in a little bit here. We are over on Clark Moody's dashboard, of course, and we are currently at a block height of 813,793. That's, I think that might be the most important number on this whole thing. TikTok next block. It's almost like Bitcoin works exactly as designed. Anyways, the current Bitcoin price is currently at $34,800, at least according to Clark Moody's dashboard. I'm not exactly sure where he's pulling the data from. And we are getting a Moscow time, aka how much your fiat dollar is worth, aka how much Bitcoin you can buy for a single dollar. It's currently at 2875 Remember when we were doing polls a couple of weeks ago about will we see 4K sats again? Will we see 4K sats again? I don't know. I mean, we might not even see 3K sats again. Shouts out to Hot or Not. Anyways, the total percentage of Bitcoin that will ever be issued is currently at 92.97%. The market cap in fiat terms is at 678.8 billion. You can see it's inching up. Remember how long we've hovered at $500 billion? Well, it's going up. You know, it's nice to see the Bitcoin price start to do, do its things. The realized monetary inflation taking fiat currencies to school is currently at 1.74%. The Bitcoin versus gold market cap. Wow, we're above 5%. All right, we're inching, guys. We're we're making strides. We're, we're seeing them tailwinds. Okay, the total capacity, total public capacity of Lightning Network is at 5,223.06 BTC. The hash rate the last 90 days is 407.2 exahashes. And the pending fees at least to the mempool that Clark Moody is pulling data from, is currently at 2.79 BTC. It's almost like Bitcoin works exactly as designed. All right, guys. So, oh, what's going on here? My, Sorry, sorry. I, I guess I just, I just stopped it. I just stopped it. I was like, I didn't show you the numbers. All right, guys, as I was telling you, um, I know we all love to see number go up. We all, we all get excited. You know, we're all here. To get some purchasing power increase in our holdings. Yes, yes, yes. You know, as the meme goes, we all come for the money, but we stay for the revolution. Well, I think times like this is very important to get back to the basics, get back to the fundamentals. Yes, of course, we love to see the Bitcoin price go up. Yes, of course, we know that the FOMO will bring more and more people and more and more adopters to Bitcoin. But it's times like these where sometimes... Remembering why you hodl, remembering why you do what you do is the most important things to remember because as we go further into this bull run, things are going to get absolutely crazy. And for all you new people out here that have never been in a bull run, uh, it's totally different vibe. Bear market, everyone's fighting. What was, what was Yellow's rules again? Uh, fight talk about price and talk about fighting. I forget what it was, but in bull run, it's usually a lot, a lot of crazy. It's just full of crazy. New charlatans come into the space. You forget why you're doing what you're doing. And everyone doesn't understand why you're hodling. They just think you're here to get rich. Well, I really like this video right here. Shouts out to our boy, Max DeMarco, AKA he used to be pleb music, a great Bitcoin filmmaker. He asked Sailor a question. Which question did nobody ask you before, but you always wanted to answer? And Sailor's response is just beautiful. And I, and I think it really goes to why we do what we do. Bitcoin has changed our lives. We think Bitcoin can change your life as well. And just understanding that, yes, you will have to hodl through the ups and downs, the roller coaster. But what we're doing here is important. Holding Bitcoin is much bigger than just yourself, even though it is about yourself. It's about filling up your cup first before it overflows and really trying to usher in a better world. Anyways, let's get into this clip because it's going to help Dell and I riff very well. Anyways, listen to this, guys. What is the question you were never asked, but you always wanted to answer? What is the question I was never asked in my entire life 
that I always wanted to answer. Believe it or not, the question that I can't recall being asked is, what are you doing to make the world a better place? So what would your answer be? Bitcoin. <laughs> that's, that's basically the question. How are you going to make the world a better place? You're going to engineer a better world. The generic answer is engineer a better world, whether it's engineer a bridge, engineer a, a plane, engineer a power plant engineer a reservoir, engineer a digital monetary system, engineer something to make the world a better place. And, and that is, you know, that's the credo of the engineer. That's what I've been doing my entire life. But in my entire life, the most impressive engineering thing I've, I've ever had the opportunity to be a part of is Bitcoin. What is Absolutely love that response, guys. Uh, and then I was going to say the same thing, Agent Gold. Uh, the the pause, I don't know if it was for just dramatic, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> just to, to make it more dramatic, but it, it was amazing to see him think so hard about it. I don't know what my answer would have been, but I just, I absolutely love this response here because I also believe that being a Bitcoiner, as much as it is about individual liberty, it is about engineering a better world. As we say all the time, fix the money, fix the world. The fiat world, the fiat incentives are just, they're so corrupt. And, and Dell is going to touch on this today. We, we are seeing in real time, we're seeing the cracks in the system. We're seeing that just everything about the fiat world has brought us to this point where we are starting to crescendo in peak clown world. and. I've dedicated my life a long time ago to talk about Bitcoin. I think more and more people should embrace Bitcoin. And whether they embrace it or not, they will embrace it as the saying goes, like safety. And again, you know, I use this quote all the time. People will embrace Bitcoin like gunpowder out of necessity. We are seeing in real time that people need Bitcoin. But what does this mean? I say it all the time. You know, Bitcoin is purpose. Like ushering in the Bitcoin standard, I, I don't think there's anything more important than ushering in a neutral permissionless 21 million hard cap money that cannot be debased. It's literally about stopping theft from these powers that be that have constantly gaslighted us. They're constantly taking money from you and I and everyone we've ever known. And they're putting it towards things that we would inherently just not agree with. And I think by, as we always say, you know, the meme, fix the money, fix the world. That as more and more people start to adopt Bitcoin, as more and more people start to see the incentives of the fiat class, the fiat system, it will become very clear that we are ushering in a better world by bringing a neutral money that is separate from, from state, that no one can control, that there's no cabal out there that can take from you. And to me, I just I don't think there's something more honorable than trying to propagate the Bitcoin memes to put your hat in the ring and make Bitcoin content to try to wake up your friends and family to fight for freedom because Bitcoin is freedom money. And we say it all the time. It is Bitcoin or it is slavery. It is a total controlled money or one that is outside of their control. I literally did this experiment with my with my mom and my brother yesterday i'm like I, I i got on a rant about like the world economic forum and and klaus schwab and i did the whole like you know you will own nothing and be happy meme and my parent my mom never heard this nor my brother and they were sitting there like wait what like are they really saying this i'm like yeah this is the world they want for you and i think the choice is very easy a money that is fully controlled by these people or one that is outside of their control and my mom's like, yeah, that's very obvious. Of course, you want the money outside of the control. Well, this is what we're doing, guys. We are engineering a better world with better incentives. And Bitcoin's incentives have stayed strong for 14 years. And I think they're going to stay strong for a lot, lot longer than this. And we're seeing we're, we're starting to be in the very beginnings of a bull run. And again, it's just important to remember why you hodl. Look, we all have different reasons to hodl. And 
let me be very transparent. If your reason to hodl is just to see your purchasing power go up, I don't see anything wrong with this. We all want to live a better life. And for better or worse, we all need to make money. We all need to store our value long term. That's a that's a honorable reason, in my opinion. But also, as we unplug more and more people and they opt out of the fiat war machine, we will usher in a better, more peaceful world because the incentives will be aligned that you are better off to cooperate with humans than you are to steal and force them to do what you want to do. Moving forward, we will have property rights encrypted via algorithms and no man, no corrupt human in the middle that can steal from you. It's literally about just stopping governments from stealing from you. I don't know about you, but that's something I think is worth fighting. That's something that I think is worth propagating. It is, I, w- I, I don't want to say like the Robin Hood meme, you know, giving back. It's more about just protecting yourself from the theft that is so rampant and common in the fiat world. That is the status quo. And if if you don't think that that's the most important thing to be doing, engineering a better world, I think we've all grew up with the idea that, yeah, I want to leave a better world than when I came from where I come from, what I was given. And Sailor's saying the same thing. And he's a rocket scientist. You know, he's a billionaire. Yeah, maybe it's not as powerful when I say it, when you guys say it. But we are all saying the same thing. By living and propagating the Bitcoin standard and stopping the distortion of fiat currencies, we can usher in a better world. But it starts with you, the individual. You need to opt out. You need to have some savings in Bitcoin. You need to make the decision for yourself that you need to hold Bitcoin. And as I say, I've said it three, four times already. Once you know why you hodl, the hodling becomes easy. And if you're here just for the gains, then you may get shaken out as the price goes higher, as we see dips. This is why we have tried to instill in you guys throughout the bear market the conviction to hold Bitcoin long term, to know why you're holding Bitcoin. 21 million hard cap, censorship resistant money, freedom money, digital money for a digital world. This is the best money in the world. And I, I, I just I can't think of a better thing to do with my time than try to wake more and more people up to the truth, the way that is the Bitcoin standard. Anyways, anyways, Dell, what's your thoughts on this? Well, there's a couple of things that have been banging around in my head as you've been talking. One of the things is people talking in the chat about the shit coiners and how maybe they will see the light this time around. <clears throat> I hope so. I certainly hope so. I hope that these people playing these different games go, oh, maybe I should just stack this one thing that has been around since its inception. It's the first and the, the only true digital scarcity, Bitcoin. All these other things are permutations of that original best idea. It's like trying to take a wheel and going, oh, how can we improve it? See, th- this wheel, there's actually... When you look at the wheel, there's only a certain part of it that's touching the ground at any given time. So if we remove 50% of the wheel, we can just take out chunks of it, then we don't need uh, that, that other bit. We can, we can have 50% less wheel, which we can then use that material to build other things. Like we can use it and put it on the car. And depending on who you get to spin that narrative, you you could sell that. You'd be like, look, you, look at the wheel. There's not There's only like... 10% of it touching the ground. So we clearly don't need that under uh, that other 90%. Oh, I guess, I mean, he's right. Yeah, that other 90% isn't touching the ground. So what we can do here is we can take that material and we can use it and we can save that money and by pu- and put it into other parts of the car. Like, oh, that's a really good idea. And then you try driving the car like, oh, wait, where's the rest of the wheel? Well, this doesn't work very well. So it's the same thing with an umbrella. The economic storms, and I, I use this in a kind of metaphorical sense here, you, it's, it's raining down. It's constantly raining. Things that are, think of it like acid rain. Along comes this person over here. They build a shelter and like, oh, this is this is real estate. Somebody else builds this little uh, uh, gazebo. Oh, this is gold. There's all these different things that might work for a time. There's different things. And then Satoshi comes out and it's like, look, I got an umbrella. This is something that you can carry with you. You can go wherever you want and 100 percent protects you from these economic storms. And you have it. You are the one holding it and you can go wherever you want and be like, wow, that's a really good idea. But then other people come along and like, well, what if we hang lights off of the umbrella? And what if we punch holes in the umbrella to let some of that air through? Because it's not all bad, all the economic story, like you do want some of it, and it just causes these problems. Like, look, no, stop fucking around with the umbrella. This is the best engineered design that we have. It's an umbrella. 
you get to own it and it can protect you from all of this crap that is constantly falling down. If you want to go over there with it, you can go over there with it. If you want to go over here with it, it doesn't matter where you want to go with it. It is your umbrella. Nobody else owns it. You have it in your self custody. Why would you give this umbrella the, the, that is protecting you from all this nonsense to somebody else to safeguard it for you? Why would you do that? Well, you're then you're not safeguarded. They're safeguarded. They've got the umbrella, but you're now you're back exposed to all the turmoil and all the nonsense that's falling down on you. And the other thing is that line in uh, Fight Club where it's towards the end with they got the whole thing going on there. And it's, I think it's right in like the last 15 minutes of it or something. And he's like, we're everywhere. We, we are absolutely everywhere. And there are Bitcoiners that are in every walk of life right now. They're all the way down from the burger flippers that are mumbling. They're listening about it. They're mumbling to their friends about it. Well, maybe not mumbling. They're speaking clearly and with confidence. Shoulders held high, head, head pulled back and they're telling their friends and they're like, ah, shut up, shut up, shut up. Well, I bet, I'll bet, I'll bet there's some people that have talked about Bitcoin, have worn a Bitcoin hat, a shirt, something like that, that have had some people come up to them and say, like, hey, wh why is the, I just saw in the news that the price hit 35,000? I thought it was, Last I saw, it was like 15 or 16. What, what what happened? What do you mean, what happened? It's the best form of money that's ever existed. I've, I tried to tell you this. I tried to tell you this. That conversation, guarantee you, is happening at the lowest levels of economic society and at the highest levels as well. At boardroom meetings, they're coming out of a meeting to, for some multi-million dollar merger. It's like, hey, hey, uh, Bob, you got a second? Uh, yeah, yeah, what's going on? I was just heading over to the, the three-star Michelin restaurant with, with the corporate emperor, blah, 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 blah. Well, that Bitcoin thing, I just saw that it, uh, the portfolio, blah, 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 is increased or net worth, blah, 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 buying a yacht, blah, blah, Martha's Vineyard, blah, blah, money, money, money. Uh, how's that all work? Well, let me show you this book. Fiat, uh, the, not Fiat, but um, the, the Bitcoin standard. And what's the, he wrote the, the Fiat standard. That's the most recent one. Uh, so yeah, these conversations, Bitcoiners are everywhere. And, it's just this, these conversations are going to keep on happening as this price continues to to pump. I honestly trying to see this price go down. I, I want 5K sats back. <laughs> but I don't think that's happening. Oh, man. Love it. Love it. But yeah, man, it's very it's very simple. The incentives to cooperate on Bitcoin are stronger than they are to steal and perpetuate violence. And we're living in a world right now where the fiat world is the status quo. And the status quo is literally theft and violence, perpetuate war. And I don't know about you, but I am opting out. I've completely opted out of the system. And I, I just, I don't think there's anything more important than trying to fix the money so that we can fix the world and continue to propagate the Bitcoin memes and show more and more people the light and show more and more people that they need to have some savings. You need to have some capital or else you will have nothing and be happy. But I don't know about you. That sounds that sounds absolutely terrible to me. Anyways, let's do a shout out to our boys at Bitcoin 2024, Bitcoin Magazine. We're going to be in Nashville, guys. We're taking over Nashville July 25th to 27th, 2024. Get your tickets today. They're the cheapest they will be. You guys constantly complain about the price. So buy them today because they're going to go up. We know you're going to FOMO into the conference. Shit. You could even flip your tickets when the conference comes around, guys. But we want to see you guys in Nashville. I'm super excited for this one. All my friends have been telling me that Nashville is super lit and we got to get over there. So I'm excited to go hang out in Nashville with my boys, especially my boy Nick Camp Mine over there at Bitcoin Magazine. Anyways, let's get into the news, guys. Uh, give you an update on what, what this ETF shenanigans is all about. The Daily News. I want to give a shout out to our sponsor, Foundation Devices. It's self-custody done right. They built a premium grade hardware wallet called Passport right here in the US. It's fully open source and verifiable. It's the most intuitive Bitcoin wallet designed with a UX reminiscent of a simple feature phone. So you will know how to navigate it and use it the moment you pick it up. Get your Bitcoin off exchanges and into your into your own hands in just a few minutes. Experience the peace of mind that comes with taking ownership of your own keys. After a massive sellout during Bitcoin Miami 2023, the passport is back in stock at foundationdevices.com. Bitcoin only, open source verifiable, completely air gap security model, gorgeous design craft, premium grade materials. If you're thinking about getting your Bitcoin off exchanges, this is the one for you. Check out the Passport link in the show notes below to learn more. 
All right, guys, scan the QR code, get yourself a foundation device, passport. Uh, the You need to secure your cold storage now. I've been telling you guys this for a while. The mempools are, get, are pretty clear. They will get crazy. You do not want to get caught up in the hype when Bitcoin starts to get closer to 100K and you don't know where your Bitcoin is. You don't know if you have access to your Bitcoin. Scan the QR code. Make sure your cold storage is secure today. Anyways, let's update you guys on all the stuff that we were covering yesterday. So again, let's do a little PSA here. I know I know all Bitcoin contents become macro now. Macro, macro, macro. Uh, for better or worse, guys, you know, Bitcoin is for anyone. And we are seeing that the institutional... Uh, interest in Bitcoin is raising that there's capital on the sidelines and whether this is the reason for the price to pump or not, I think might be irrelevant because I would just say, you know, it's the having is inching here and there is real, real demand waiting on the sidelines for Bitcoin. And whether that is institutional investors, whether that is retail investors just sitting on the sidelines waiting for something. It all points to the same thing. People are watching Bitcoin and they want some exposure. And if they aren't able to get exposure yet, well, for better or worse, the ETFs will be there for them. And hopefully they will finally get to taking custody of their Bitcoin. Anyways, we covered the whole uh, ETF stuff at the beginning of the week. And yesterday, we even covered it a little bit. We saw that uh, the iShares Bitcoin Trust from BlackRock was listed on the DTCC website. Then the website crashed. And then after the show, we saw that it was relisted on the site. And so does this matter? I think it's basically the question that we're all asking ourselves. And you can see I'm over here on the DTCC.com website. You can see iShares Bitcoin Trust here is listed again. The website's back up. We also saw that ARC, uh, I'm pretty sure it was the futures Bitcoin ETFs were also added to the website. And I sh shout out to the Bitcoin therapist. He goes, Kathy Wood ain't playing games. She working overtime, the night shift. So we saw that the Bitcoin ETFs were relisted. And the question in everyone's mind basically was, does this even matter? And we also saw this little PSA, some, some context to the DTCC adding of the ET ETFs. And it's basically saying that uh, they're just preparing for it. So let's just read this. It goes, it is standard practice for DTCC to add securities to the NSCC security eligibility file in preparation for the launch of a new ETF to the market. The file is also posted to DTCC.com. The names in the file include active and potential ETF securities. Appearing on this list is simply an indication that an ancient bank has requested a DTCC identifier for an ETF fund and that DTCC may process that transaction at an undetermined date in the future following SEC approval. Appearing on the list is not indicative or it's not indicative of an outcome for an outstanding regulatory or other approval process in respect of a particular ETF fund. So it's kind of a nothing burger. But the point here, I think, and, and the part that everyone probably missed is that BlackRock's iShares Bitcoin Trust ETF was added to the file in August of 2023. Remember, guys, it's October. Uh, no one caught it for a few months. And then, you know, <laughs> There's always, always some kind of reason for the Bitcoin price. And of course, everyone gets caught up in the current thing. And we're all looking for reasons for why the Bitcoin price is going up. I would just say, you know, it's basic supply and demand. We're seeing that there is more demand on Bitcoin. We're seeing that there's more attention in regards to Bitcoin. And of course, we're moving closer into the halving. So there's going to be less Bitcoin on the market, which means number will go up. Anyways, again, just doubling down on this, uh, we got this news this morning. Be it, this is by Eric Balconis, Bal Balchinus, uh, senior ETF analyst for Bloomberg, and he goes, be it DTCC or seeding or new amendments is same, issuers checking boxes, fine tuning, which points to an eventual launch. Again, we've been saying for a while, it's not about if, it's about when. And again, just to kind of clarify here, shouts out to Stephen Lubka. I'm not even going to try to say your name, but 
you, you guys know them. It goes DTCC listing didn't mean anything. DTCC delisting didn't mean anything. DTCC relisting still doesn't mean anything. And if you don't want to take a Bitcoiners take from this, we got this guy, Phil Bach, who posted this yesterday. And apparently he used to work at ETF launches at uh, New York Stock Exchange 2010 to 2016. He goes, I spent six years managing new ETF launches and about 15 years in ETF product development and management. The DTCC thing means absolutely nothing, <laughs> nothing. Get offline and spend time with your loved ones. And I, I wanted to add this one because I tell you this all the time, man. Just save in Bitcoin and live your life. This is all you got to do. We're all looking for reasons for the Bitcoin price, but we know the Bitcoin fundamentals are strong. 21 million hard cap, censorship resistant money. It's algorithmically controlled monetary policy, digital money for a digital world, whatever whatever meme you want to jump on, that is the reason for Bitcoin pumping, basically. And then just on that point, again, it's all been macro, macro, macro. Everything's about the ETF recently. But we did see this uh, Galaxy Research report drop yesterday. And it's basically saying that once the B Bitcoin ETFs are approved, we could potentially see in year one about $14.4 billion that will flow into Bitcoin. And I know all my friends out there are basically saying like, oh, uh, you guys are all macro uh, invested. You guys care so much about the ETF. Whether we like it or not, guys, there is interest in a Bitcoin spot ETF. There is capital waiting on the sidelines. And this is all the talk right now. We are a news show, so we got to cover the news for you. And again, on that same point, Commissioner of the CFTC suggests that the market is prepared for a spot Bitcoin ETF. Everyone is talking that a Bitcoin ETF will get approved. Will it get approved this year? I'm kind of leaning on the opposite side. I think 2024 at minimum is when we'll see an ETF, a spot Bitcoin ETF get approved. But who knows? I don't know. I'm just sitting here watching the news like you are and wondering what's going on. But of course, it wouldn't be an Opti news story if I didn't kind of drop a meme in here for you guys. So shouts out the Byzantine general. I don't know this account, but this is just a straight sauce here. And we got a picture of Larry Fink and it goes, leak the ticker liquidate the shorts, get them hyped, remove the ticker, liquidate the longs, get all of them to reshort, load up cheap again, pump it again. Nothing personal, kid. It's just business. And it's what I've been telling you guys for a long time. We know the playbook from these CEOs, these billionaires. It's all the same thing. You know, you FUD Bitcoin, you stack your bags. Once your bags are packed, then you release the good news and let the price run. And so I know a lot of us Bitcoiners right now, we're, we're getting excited. We finally got a little pump. It's been what, like 510 days since we've been at these prices again. It feels good to be right and vindicated for a couple of hours. And, you know, I know your friends are texting you. I even had my dad text me like, oh, do you see the Bitcoin price? Like, good job. You know, we're all getting these calls right now. Well, it's going to get crazier going forward from here. But I really like this sober take from Tour de Mister. And he goes, nobody ever has the full picture of how Bitcoin prices are formed. And that's OK. It shows that this is not a centralized bureaucracy, but rather a dynamic ecosystem. The Bitcoin economy consists of independent economic agents organically exchanging imperfect market information. So we are seeing in real time that there is incredible demand in regards to Bitcoin. Yes, the spot Bitcoin ETF is all the rage. Yes, we know BlackRock, the enemy out there is trying to get your Bitcoins. Don't sell them your Bitcoins. And so, of course, as a news channel for you guys, we've got to cover the news. we got to make sure we're clarifying points so that you know exactly what's going on. And so all this stuff, going on right now. I think it's just noise and nothing burger and us Bitcoiners just trying to find reasons to get excited, reasons to point so why the Bitcoin price is going up. But I think it's very simple. We're heading into a halving. The supply of Bitcoin is going to get cut in half. Number will have to go up as the response of demand and attention starts to increase. And we've been seeing it all year long here on the show, guys. The amount of media attention Bitcoin has gotten, I think, has has gone exponential and it will only go exponential moving forward. And now Bitcoin is a defining conversation in all circles, whether they're political, whether they're financial. It's becoming clear that people will have to have a Bitcoin position. And you know ours. You're against Bitcoin. You're against freedom. So, this is why we constantly tell you, yes, we know a spot Bitcoin ETF can potentially increase the paper Bitcoin. But this is why we say, look, 
You need to take Bitcoin into self custody. We know that the the boomers out there they want they want someone else to custody their their assets. It is what it is. Hopefully, moving forward, we can get some of that capital to finally take self custody. But there will be people out there that don't want to take self custody, and it just it is what it is, guys. So we do our best to ensure the Bitcoin ethos so that you guys know, hey, I need to take Bitcoin into self custody. What is going on in the markets? Really. I think it's just showing that supply and demand of Bitcoin is uh, is starting to outweigh. What's the simple heuristic here? Why did the Bitcoin price go up? Because more people wanted to buy Bitcoin. Simplify it, guys. And we're seeing that even if you're concerned about the ETF, that is still the case. We're seeing institutional money on the sidelines. Institutional attention is is increasing. So more and more people are wanting to buy Bitcoin. So what's your job? Don't sell them your Bitcoin. Hodl that Bitcoin. Make it through the the hodl buyout zone because moving forward this year, it's going to get absolutely crazy. Hence why I wanted to start today's with that numbers of remember why you hodl Bitcoin. Because as the price goes up, as we as we enjoy the roller coaster, there will be points where you're going to be tried and you're going to ask yourself, wow, do I want to buy X thing, you know, or do I just want to hodl to Valhalla? Anyways, Dell. What's your thoughts on all this? It's it's a it's a bunch of noise, right? Like, yeah, yeah. I it, it uh, to be perfectly honest, it's kind of difficult to come up with different ways to spin this. Like, I I'm 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 astounded that you and Nico can do this day in and day out because I'm only here once every two weeks, and it's like, boy, how do we talk about the same thing again? <laughs> again, because it's it's it it really comes down to just get some Bitcoin, have less than zero. I I can't tell you how much to have. I don't know what your economic situation is. I have no idea what your bank account looks like. I don't know what your struggle is like. But all I can say is that I'm pretty confident that basically anybody on, okay, I can't say the planet, but certainly in the US, most people in the US could afford to get less than zero Bitcoin. That like it, You could go out on the street and find a quarter by walking around for a few hours. I don't have a few hours, Dell. I don't have any hours. All right, we'll sell something on Craigslist. Almost guaranteed you're not. I mean, if you're online watching the, something on the internet, then I guess, I, I suppose you could be homeless living out of a cardboard box outside of a Starbucks getting tapping into that Wi-Fi. I, I, I guess that's a possibility. I just don't think that that's too many of our watchers. So I'm pretty sure that most people that have tuned in to watch Simply Bitcoin for longer than a few minutes and like what we're talking about here have some amount of expendable income that they go and buy a couple dollars, 50 cents worth. I don't know what the lowest amount that you can buy Bitcoin is, but I think it's like a, a few dollars on Cash App. It's like a dollar's worth. If you can do that, I mean, you can do that once every two weeks when you get your paycheck or once every week or you go out and you panhandle for a couple of bucks then you go to a, a walgreens or whatever because you can take cash and you can get it into cash app then that is a way that you could start stacking some sats and you're like oh it's not enough it's not enough but look you don't know what enough is you have no idea what the future holds so if you have less than zero then there is a chance i can't make any predictions here but there is a chance and given past history and what we're seeing currently that the dollar that you put in today will be worth more down the road in terms of dollar terms in terms of bitcoin terms that bitcoin is bitcoin so say making excuses about how, oh, I can't stack enough. I think some people go, boy, I don't think that I can never reach one Bitcoin. So why even bother? It's like what that's like saying, oh, I can't own a, a fabulous 13 story monumental mansion in the, the Key West. So uh, well, I can't ever own an island. So why should I ever get into real estate? What? Like if you're homeless and you have an opportunity to get in an apartment, even if it is one of those apartments. Wouldn't it be nice to have a door that you can lock and that you can close and that you can call your own space and that you don't have to worry about dogs coming over and using your face as a toilet? Like maybe maybe having some place that you can call your own and sleep and safe and securely is better than not having that. So having some amount of your savings in something that actually holds its value might be a better idea than not having that, even if it is $3.48. That seems like a better option than having zero dollars and zero cents in that thing that could hold your time and value. So like I was saying at the outset, I don't know how to keep on spinning that. I don't know how to keep on saying that. The people here probably largely agree with that to different ways. There's different there's different takes on this whole thing. But I mean, the, the message at the end of the day is is 
just pay attention to what's going on. Wake up. I'm going to be coming out with a video here pretty soon that guarantees there's one thing, one extremely positive thing that comes from getting into Bitcoin. And what I mean by getting into Bitcoin is doing some reading, listening to some podcasts, more than one or two. If you do that, then I promise you, I promise you, I've seen it in basically everyone that I've met that like, no, I, I think it is really actually 100% of the people that I've met in Bitcoin that this thing has happened. And you can make the argument that this thing that I'm going to talk about is more valuable than the price of Bitcoin, no matter what that top end is. So yeah, I'm going to be making a video about that because I've seen it time and time again, and it it is guaranteed to happen. There, there's 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 zero chance that it doesn't happen. Um, and so yeah, just keep on tuning in, check us out, and uh, spread the news, spread the message with your friends, and keep on hodling, keep on stacking. Well, that was a, a, a good little leak there. Uh, you got me intrigued on what this video is going to be about, but uh, <laughs> we don't know when this is going to get posted. So anyways, guys, before we move on to the culture and let Dell rant for a little bit, check out our boys over at Kaboom Racks. It's the best way to buy ASICs, to sell ASICs. They're even hosting ASICs, guys. So we love these guys. They will... White Glove service you. Get in touch with my boy Alex over there. He will answer all your questions. If you're thinking about getting into Bitcoin mining, maybe you have some old ASICs laying around that you're like, you know what? I want to turn these into sats. Get in touch with Kaboom Racks. And then, of course, if you have uh, your ASICs already, do that Kaboom Racks firmware. It's top notch. Anyways, get in touch with Kaboom Racks. Go to kaboomracks.com. If you're thinking about hosting your Bitcoin ASICs, get in touch with the boys over there. Just even even just to go ask them questions, they will answer all your questions. Absolutely love the team over there. They are savage Bitcoiners. Couldn't couldn't have partnered with a better team. Shouts out my boy Alex. He's actually a good friend as well. Anyways, let's get into the culture. I'm 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 very excited for this Dell rant today. The Daily Culture. Brought to you by swanbitcoin.com. Swan is the best way to build your Bitcoin stack with automated Bitcoin savings plans and instant purchases serving clients of any size from $10 to $10 million. We love Swan because they incentivize self-custody and dollar cost averaging. What are you waiting for? Visit swanbitcoin.com today. All right. So let's see here. The first, I got, I'm not sure which one I'm going to play first, I guess. I'm going to start with this this Biden clip. It's real short, but what he says here ties directly into the Mitch McConnell thing. So let me share this tab instead. And here we go. Just a few moments. But what he says here is really important to keep in mind here. Let me be clear about something. We send Ukrainian equipment sitting in our stockpiles. And when we use the money allocated by Congress, we use it to replenish our own stores, our own stockpiles with new equipment, equipment that, def that defends America and is made in America. Patriot missiles for air defense batteries made in Arizona, artillery shells manufactured in 12 states across the country in Pennsylvania, Ohio, Texas, and so much more, you know, just as in World okay, War so that's the important thing there. I'm going to switch over to this other one, but just we're going to spell that out for you real clear. What he's saying there is that basically we've got arms, we've got munitions, we've got stockpiles of stuff. I think Mitch McConnell here mentioned something like 38 states that are producing some armaments of war, and those things are sitting on shelves. Imagine a Costco, a war Costco. You go in, you're like, mm, I'm going to take three of these grenades, and I'm going to take five of those missiles, and I'm going to take one of these tanks. You go in there. And it's all sitting on the shelves because the, the the manufacturers are making this stuff and it has to go somewhere. So it goes to the, the armories, the stockpiles, whatever. And then in comes the congressmen, in comes the people that make these decisions. And they go, hmm, look at all this stuff. Look at all this. Look at all these bombs and missiles and all these weapons of, of destruction in here. What can we do with all this? It's just sitting here. We got to have some use for it. We got to do something with this. And it's going, oh, hey, 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 I got an idea. We could ship it over there where a bunch of people are getting blown to shreds and we could help do more of that. And then when our shelves are empty, the guys, oh, 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 we'll go to the manufacturers and they'll make more, which will make us money because I have stocks. I've got, I've got holdings in those companies and they go like, oh, exactly. Brilliant. Okay. I froze. Okay. So now we're going to play this thing. That was a real great phrase for me to freeze. Wonderful. Good, good, good expression there. All right. Now let's play this one. 
Uh, there we go. We're playing. Oh, muted. Let's... Come on, Mitch. Even he even freezes the if computers. You look at the Ukraine assistance. Let's let's talk about where the money's really. Oh come on, Mitch! You can't even get through the internet. Well, okay. go on. Oh. A significant portion of it's being spent in the United States. What is this? He slows down everything. He gets on screen and the internet is like, oh, I can't handle it. All right, well, this isn't working. So we're going to stop that. But he goes on for about a minute here. Maybe, maybe about... I can pull it up. Maybe I, I can pull it up for you. Okay. But yeah, keep, keep going. Keep going. All right. So he's, he's talking about how the, he says right here, a significant portion of the money is being spent in the United States. So they pass these bills, this $106 billion bill that Biden wants to pass for helping Ukraine, helping the border, helping this different stuff. But that money is not really going to help those places. It, in, it, you could make the argument pretty easily that it's actually making those places worse off because it's they're sending weapons and munitions over there. Okay, here we go. Maybe maybe he'll play here. No sound. Oh, no sound. Oops, wrong one. Wrong one. Come on, Mitch. Come on, Mitch. I got you. I got you right here. really go on a significant portion of it's being spent in the united states and 38 different states replacing the weapons that we sent to ukraine with more modern weapons so we're rebuilding our industrial base that's what president biden's seeking to do it's it's correct no americans are getting killed in ukraine we're re rebuilding our industrial base uh the Ukrainians are destroying the army of one of our biggest rivals. I have a hard time finding anything wrong with that. Mm -hmm. I think it's wonderful that they're defending themselves. And also the notion that the Europeans are not doing enough. They've done almost $90 billion. They're housing a bunch of refugees who escaped. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the, our NATO allies in Europe have done quite a lot. You sound like you have a lot in common with President Biden in his worldview, based on what you just laid out. Well, not on the domestic side, <laughs> but on, on this issue that we were discussing today, we're generally in the same place. So let me let me let me walk you through this. If if if, if the idea of sometimes I think war shuts off people's brains because it's such an appalling atrocity that humans have devised to hurt and harm each other and take over land and do absolutely foul things to each other. So let me put this in a more of a, a fun, easy to digest uh, way. So, all right, you've got a country that has a lot of food. That's the U.S. We got lots of food over here. I don't think there's many people that are going hungry. If you want food, you can find food. If you have to go to a restaurant, there's food. There is food in the U.S. There isn't some sort of nationwide starvation issue. If anything, it's quite the opposite. You see plenty of people at the airport that need two seats and they should go, I only want to pay for one. Well, you should have the body for the size of one seat. All right. OK, but yeah, I'm fat shaming because people need to lose some goddamn weight. <clears throat> All right, so you got a country with a lot of food. You got a lot of food. And then you go, boy, we got all this food. How can we make more money from making food? Clearly, we're pretty good at making food. Well, what if another place needed food? Well, how, how, why would they come to us for food? Well, if they didn't have food and they were starving, then they would really want food. All right, well, let's cause some turmoil in this other part of the world where they are their their food supply is reduced and so then they need food then what we can do is we can send them some of the food that we already have we'll just send them food here you go food and then we'll need to refill our stockpile of food so then the people that are invested in food company 1 and food company 2 and the hot dog stand and the banana stand then they will make more money because we're pumping money into those things and then we're replenishing our food supplies. Isn't that great? Yeah, but the people over there that are starving and that we caused the problem, we burned all their fields and we blew up their plants and destroyed all their cows and basically decimated all of their food supply. Isn't that a bad thing? No. How is that a bad thing? They're over there. We're not sending any of our people over there to starve. Our people are fine. Our people are safe. 
38 states are producing food. This is a wonderful thing. We're helping our economic base. We're replenishing our food. All this expired stuff, it's expired anyways. Look at the, look at the expiration date on this. It just expired, well, it expires next year. It's fine, but it's expiring next year. So we got to get rid of it. We got to replenish it with new food. Oh, I guess that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, let's ship all of our food that we have over there to them. Let's we'll keep on replenishing it. And then the politicians that are invested in the different food companies, like, look at my stocks are going up and I can buy more crap. Isn't this wonderful? We print money, help the food companies here, send the food over there. We're helping them. Yeah, but you kind of caused the problem over there. Well, who cares? That's, that's us all besides the point. Who cares if people over there are starving? That's that we're sending food over there. Yeah, but you, you starve them in the first place to then send them food. So it's all a bunch of nonsense so that we can send not food, but actually quite the opposite munitions bombs and, and and airplanes and tanks and blah 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 okay who cares that we're not sending soldiers over there i i guess hooray to that i i i guess it's better than 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 sending them over there to die and participate in this nonsense so yeah yes that is a good thing but that's like saying hey nobody's in the car that drove off the cliff it's like yeah but you made the cliff and you started sending cars that way so that you could rebuild cars. Yeah, but nobody that we know is going in the cars. Yeah. Who cares? Maybe just don't send the cars down the road that has the cliff off the end of it. I mean, how about that? Nah, but we make a lot of money rebuilding cars that go off the cliff. It, 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 it's, it's such nonsense and that you and I have no real say. The people are like, well, you just got to vote harder. You got to vote for somebody that actually cares. You got to vote for somebody that's going to turn this thing around. Really? Really? Do you actually think that your vote matters? Do you think that the people in power, the people that actually control this entire system and do whatever they want, actually give two craps about your vote? It's a it's a it's a circus. It's like going to a, a movie and saying, if I buy more popcorn, then Captain America will definitely beat the bad guy. What? Captain America doesn't even know that you exist. He's an actor that is probably sitting on a sipping a, a Mai Tai off on a beach because this movie was made two months ago and now it's on playing on a TV screen. Like you're nobody. You're absolutely nobody. You're just a dude watching this play out in the comfort of your theater eating popcorn. Well, maybe if I buy salted popcorn, Captain America will get it this time. Maybe I'm going to buy the caramel popcorn and that'll make sure that Thor shows up with Rocket Raccoon and he saves the day because that's what, who I want at. What? What? You buying popcorn or buying a Pepsi or buying two cans of Skittles isn't going to change the outcome of this at all. Your vote does literally nothing. All it gets you, all it does is get you a little sticker that says, I voted so you can go around in virtue. Look, I, I voted. Look at me. Hey, everyone. Did you see? I did a thing. Oh, look, you've got the voted sticker. Like, what is what is that? You get a sticker? What are we, five years old? whoop de do. I participated in a, a, a scam and I got a sticker for it. The people that wear these things, the boomers, the people that I see wearing stickers around, I was like, do you see yourself? Do you look in the rear, the mirror and see how stupid you look? I voted. It's like saying that I, 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 sn I went into a porta potty and sniffed the smell in there and I got a sticker because I went into the, the porta john and it smells like dookie in there. Great. Yeah. Who cares? What's the point? What do you, what, 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 so what? You, you participated in a system of shit, and now you got a sticker that says you participated in a system of shit. Hey, good job. Wonderful. Yay. Good for you, Billy. You did literally nothing. You perpetuated a system that is going to keep on doing whether or not you exist. All of this entire state could go away. It could be a super volcano could erupt, and everybody's I voted stickers go up in ash, and and the system keeps on churning along. The bombs are going to keep on dropping. The people are going to keep on printing the money. Regardless of what you do, doesn't matter. Literally zero impact at all does not matter. If they want their person in power, guess what? He's going to get in power. Does not matter. We've seen it time and time again. It does not matter. You watch the news and you see, oh, look at these political coups over there. Look at these things over here. Yeah, it's more obvious when it happens over in a different part of the world because they're not as sophisticated in the games of politicking. The U.S. might have some of the best players of the political game. They are so sneaky, so slimy. That's why we have freaking TV shows made about this very thing. There are literally TV shows that people tune into to watch this happen. 
they watch it because it's dramatized and it's fun and it's interesting to watch these political people stab each other on the back on a regular basis. And it's dramatized and turned into something that you will stuff your first and drink the popcorn because it's so fun. It's so entertaining to watch this happen, just like a cartoon, just like a Marvel movie, just like any other thing. It's all a game. It's all a game so that they can stay in power and make money. That is it. That is the goal. That is it. That is literally the entire goal. Stay in power, make money, and keep on profiting off of you that have to keep on turning up to work, churning out your time, turning out your energy so that these people can keep on doing what they're doing. We're slaves in a system. Like that, That's really all it is. Nico says this all the time. It's Bitcoin or slavery. And if you, and, and, and it's not, I'm going to go a step further with that, that it, it, it isn't necessarily Bitcoin. It's what Bitcoin represents. And Bitcoin is the only thing, the only manifestation of that thing, call it whatever you want, but Bitcoin is the only thing that we currently have that is an escape hatch from that system. It's all we have. Show me something else. Oh, it's gold, though. It's gold. Really? Really? You don't have a belt strong enough to hold up the gold bars that you need to be carrying around. Well, I'll bury it in my backyard. And then how are you going to use it? Get the fuck out of here with your gold nonsense. Look, if you want to have something and own it in gold and then have a little something tucked away, I, I, you know, because it's a novelty, it's interesting. Fine, fine. Do whatever you want. But I've seen in the span of a year where I work at my fiat job, people go from using cards, sliding them down. The, the, we, we went from magnetic strips to shoving your card in the chip, to tapping it in the matter of a couple of years. Over the pandemic years, people, the whole non-touchless, that is when the tapping really kicked off. And I see it everywhere I'm at, that people have got, like, they have defaulted to tapping. So if, they, if boomers can't use their phone, they're not going to scan a QR card. Bullshit. That is how we see menus now. That is primarily how you see menus at a restaurant now. You pull out your phone, you scan the QR code because it's contactless, it's paperless, blah, 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 whatever excuse you want to make. It saves money. It saves the restaurant money because they don't have to print out new menus and you can scan it. So people can learn how to use a new system really, really fast. People aren't that stupid when it comes to learning how to spend money. So telling me that people can't figure out how to use Bitcoin is nonsense. Give me a break. Yes, they can. Yes, they can. You think they're going to opt to, oh, let me get my bar of gold and then scrape off some flags here and then you can measure that. And make Come on, give, give me a break. No. So they can scan QR codes. But at the end of the day, you show me something that's better than Bitcoin and I'll pay attention. But I've seen all the other scams. I've seen all the other altcoins. I've seen, okay, not all of them. There's 30 odd thousand of them or whatever. But I get the message. It's like, you're going to tell me that something that was the original thing is going to be beaten by a frog, Pepe, baby Pepe, whatever, sucking on a, a pacifier and he's got a little bonnet on. That's that's going to be the world's money. Get the fuck out of here. Give me a break. If you want to label it as it is, as a scam to make some money and you can think you can go buy some more popsicles with, with it, then okay, fine. You, know, you do whatever you want to do. People gamble. You have some fun. You go down to the Mojave Cactus Casino and you, you put some money in the, the coin machine. You know, have some fun. Have some fun if that's what you want to do. But don't try and convince me that that's going to be what the world is using, what somebody in Kenya and Australia and New Zealand and Canada and France is going to be using. Pepe baby coin. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go and pay my rent with Pepe baby coin. What? No, no, obviously not. Obviously not. So, yeah, that's my rant for today. I'm done. <laughs> Let the boy cook. <laughs> Okay. Wow. Uh, so much to unpack there. I, I, I'm not even going to attempt it, but I think it, re <laughs> <laughs> I think it really goes to show what we talked about in the beginning in the numbers that, you know, if you don't agree with what you're seeing in the world, then I think the most important thing to do, as we always say, is to vote with your feet and your money. You know, Reagan had that quote a long time ago, like, the only boats that matter is the ones with your pocketbook. And so this is why, as Bitcoiners, we really do believe that this is a peaceful revolution. And all you really have to do is take your labor, take your capital outside of the fiat system, put it in something that they cannot control, separate money from state. And then, of course, there's other actions you can do above that. But first and foremost, it is opting your energy, your time, your labor out of the system. Because by using the fiat dollar, you are perpetuating the system that you claim to dislike. You understand the mechanisms of broken money. Not only does it steal from you, but it funds all this crazy stuff you're seeing in the world. In the world. And until more people wake up to the scam that is fiat money, then we're going to continue to go down this route 
and they will continue to gaslight everyone because everyone is like, what's the saying in the big short? Like everyone's walking around like it's an Enya video. They don't understand what's going on. And this is all by design. You need to understand the mechanisms of money. You need to understand that at the very end of the day, all politicians are doing is vying for power. And if they have an unlimited money printer, then for better or worse, guys, they have basically unlimited power because they could always pay some henchmen off. And so this is what we're trying to do. Defund. I, I don't even want to say it, but like defund the swamp, you know, like it's a good meme anyways. But yeah, man, Dell, let the boy cook. I, I fundamentally disagree with most of the stuff I see, hence why I've opted out. And, and I'm I'm a Bitcoiner. Anyways, let's get into the memes because uh, we I think we got to lighten this one up today a little bit. Just a little bit. <laughs> the Daily Meme Review. All right, guys, you already know the deal. This is the Meme Review where you tag us on Twitter at Simply Bitcoin TV or... Or drop them, well, rather, drop them in our Telegram group, t.me slash TV. I look through it every morning to try to get memes. Don't just steal the meme and then drop it in there. Give the Twitter account credit so I can show them on the show and show them love. Tweet to the bullets, memes of the artillery. We are in an information war, and you guys are the frontline soldiers. Anyways, first meme, shouts out to my boy Rope, a.k.a. at Ropium on Twitter. And he's doing the, you know, highly regarded... Uh, spelling of this and he goes came for number go up stayed for the revolution and uh, I, I don't even remember who this guy is but he's you know he's all like shy and I think it's the Ke Kevin whatever the king of queens Kevin king that guy I have no idea he's a comedian I am pretty sure yeah. he's been on TV I am Kevin pretty James. sure he was okay. the Paul, Paul Blart mall cop yeah, Kevin Paul James. Paul Cop, exactly. Okay, <laughs> and he goes them, but I but I thought you hated BlackRock and Bitcoiners all shy and bashful and you know coy. Yeah, we get it. You know, BlackRock is buying everything up, funding all the things we dislike. They are pumping our bags, and number will go up. And as a result, uh, Bitcoin is for anyone. It is what it is. We cannot stop them. Anyway, on that note, Rope, you're sounding like a collectivist. I, I, is that where we're going here? But I really like Take the Ride and, and Rope's response here and Take the Ride. Nate goes, says Bitcoin is inevitable, is a snarky biatch when institutions show up. And Rope, found the Black Rock simp. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you got him. Got him. All right. Uh, but yeah, guys, you know, hey, this is where we are in the game. Institutional adoption is coming to Bitcoin. All we can really do is to continue to further the Bitcoin ethos, which is make sure people are taking Bitcoin into self-custody. All right, this next one is by Chewy. It's actually just a screenshot of a Bitcoin magazine video that came around, but this is literally Bitcoin in a nutshell. So Chewy, aka at S256 and on 001 goes, hashtag Bitcoin in a nutshell. And uh, this girl, I, I think her name is Isabella from Bitcoin magazine with Robert Salinas, a billionaire. And it's a screenshot and it's it's a great video if you guys haven't seen it. It is in Spanish though, and they have some subtitles here. But the screenshot here is Bitcoin in a nutshell. Uh they're just looking for a place to keep a little money that the government won't steal. Like, is is that is that such a, a just such a hard ask? You know, the the very people we are looking to find protection from are the very people here that are trying to regulate it. And all we really want to do is just hey, just stop stealing my money. It it's so simple. Uh the fiat money. Is the problem as we got here with the BTC therapist? He goes, Bitcoin fixes broken money. We have a hundred dollar bill here on fire, and it goes, The problem and the solution, which is the Bitcoin, which is a Bitcoin logo. Okay, this next one, shout out to Matt Kaiser, and it goes, Going up to, at all ports of entry in El Salvador, and it's Max Kaiser with a gun. Stop your shit coining right there. Stop your fiat shit coining. Stop your shit coining with shit coins. Stop it. Get some help. Save in Bitcoin. Live a good life. Provide value to your fellow man. This is the way. Okay, next one is by Ghost of Becca, and she goes, stay humble, stack sets. And we got a picture here of a truck with a broken down wheel in a winter road, and it looks cold. And it goes, lesson learned the hard way, and your truck is the over-leveraged position that you are in, and your broken wheel is you getting wrecked. So 
Stay humble, stack stats, stay solvent, guys. This is the way. Okay, this next one is by X Nardo, a.k.a. Pepe Nardo Studio. And he goes, good morning. Is the revolution already priced in? I didn't think so. And we got the Guy Fox Anonymous mask on a horse rider like Paul Revere. And uh, he's showing you the revolution. It's not priced in. And this last one, shout out to my boy Jesse, aka at Justifer underscore BTC. <laughs> and he goes, Hey, you're hooked now, aren't you, Anon? You're hooked now. I know you are. And it's the Pepe, you know, selling stuff out of his coat and it's green candles. I know you're hooked. If this is your first bull run, the bull, the green candles, they are intoxicating. I know you're hooked. Anyways, drop your main review score in the chat and we will cover ours live. Uh, mine, I'll go first. Again, I'm still in my dad's office, and uh, he got this 60-pack of Bic round stick extra life <laughs> pens. Oh. 60-pack. 60-pack. Nice. I'm, I'm going to do a pen as well. This is from R.A.W. Hobbies in Lenovia, Michigan. Shout out R.A.W. Hobbies game store out there. It's a, it's, a, yeah. it's a pen. Oh, it's just a pen. Just a pen. It's one pen, not 60. Yours is a little bit better. 60 pens is better than one. One pen equals one pen. That's true. It sure does. <laughs> All right, guys. Drop your meme review score in the chat over there, over there, and uh, we'll cover them live. But of course, support the boys, support the show. If you like what we're doing here, we really appreciate all the support. We really appreciate every single one of you guys that's gotten some merch. We are working on the hats. Dell's got the snapback over there. I had to get in an argument with wine so that we can get you guys some snapbacks. We will get some dad hats as well. We are working on some new designs. But you see, I've been wearing the Simply Bitcoin hoodie for the last two weeks. I'm finally going home tomorrow, guys. So I'll get my green skin. You know, we'll, we'll get back to the normal show. But hit the QR code. Get yourself a shirt. Really appreciate the support. Try to keep us as independent as possible. And uh, let's keep this show going as we move into the bull run. Okay, guys. First meme review score. I'm seeing, yes, they have came in. Let's go. Okay. First one is by Bitcoin for Canadians. It goes, I give those memes a perfect buzz from a six pack of green candle. <laughs> love it, love it. Okay, next one by Elaine. It goes, score. Bitcoin changes Fink, he confesses his sins and becomes the world's greatest peacemonger and puts all his energy into saving our corrupt world from destruction. Wow. Uh, I that, don't see that happening, but that's a good score. Yeah, that's... Uh, <laughs> That's a big one. <laughs> okay. BTC is true. Score. Bring back under 3,333 sets per dirty fiat dollar. Okay. Uh, it's not that I ran out of scores or that we are lagging. It's that the buzzer hit. We also ran out of score. Oh, here's one. the last one at the buzzer. Meme at the score. Buzzer. I want to smile from Dell af after asking him to get a Bitcoin tattoo. Oh, no, not this again. God <laughs> damn it. Fuck. Give me a God. Ugh. Ugh. Is there a smile? He asked for a smile. After I get a tattoo. With the tattoos again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. You got another deal. Uh... Thank you guys for watching. Really appreciate you guys watching the show. Like, share, subscribe. If you think you, we give you value, spread the signal, guys. It's all about spreading Bitcoin signal. Don't spread shitcoin signal. That defeats the purpose. Make sure more people are understanding why you hodl, why you're a Bitcoiner, why Bitcoin's going to take over the world, why the Bitcoin price is going up. You know, this is when you throw them the signal. Anyways, Dell, uh, you already kind of gave us a a preview of what's to come, but thanks for coming today, bro. Really appreciate you filling in on Wednesdays and guys, we'll be back tomorrow with our normal show. It'll be the last show in my dad's office and uh, we'll be back to the normal show. I'll make it pretty and all that good stuff. Anyways, see you guys on the timeline. Have a good rest of your day. Get outside, eat some good food, hang out with some good people. Peace out. We love you. <laughs>